Not too long ago, you probably weren't thinking all that much about electronics disposal. But nowadays, there's a veritable glut of inexpensive, portable electronics available around the globe. In fact, they're so common that some countries are starting to treat internet access as a human right. And like anything else, our electronics wear out over time, or at the very least, become embarrassing when something better comes along, which can take a surprisingly short amount of time. I mean, think about how often smartphones get updated. So what happens to all this stuff when we're done using it? Does it all go to some retro tech museum in the sky when we throw it away? Unfortunately, no. Much of it simply gets buried in landfills when people throw out their old modems or whatever else along with banana peels and that clown toy that Sally never wanted to play with for some reason. But as you might guess, most electronic waste or e-waste isn't biodegradable and even contains toxic metals like mercury and cadmium, as well as other not so good chemicals that can leach through landfills and end up in groundwater. Not a great situation. I mean, even if you don't think of yourself as a tree hugger, you're probably not a big fan of mercury flavored coffee. So lots of folks then opt to recycle their e-waste instead of just tossing it in the trash. But how exactly does electronics recycling work? Well, sorry to bust your happy carbon neutral bubble, but the inconvenient truth is that it often doesn't. Although there are lots of places that advertise electronic waste disposal, much of it doesn't actually end up disposed of properly at all. Instead, much of it is shipped off to poorer countries for reclamation, where things like circuit boards are literally set on fire or dunked into acid so the workers can go dig through it afterwards and recover useful materials such as copper and gold. So as you might be able to guess then, there are lots of toxic fumes that get released when electronics are burned, which has created serious health problems in impoverished areas that are economically dependent on this kind of dangerous manual labor. Nevertheless, it continues to happen because shipping e-waste to a less fortunate part of the globe is cheaper than processing it at home. Of course, this isn't meant to be a socio-political lecture, so let's talk then about how reputable electronics recycling and disposable services deal with your unwanted ghosts from Black Friday's past. Some places, like Free Geek Vancouver, rely on manual volunteer labor to separate plastics and metals and the different kinds of plastics and the different kinds of metals so they can be reused and or recycled. But there are higher tech facilities that actually automate this process by using automatic shredders that will shred your old processors, motherboards, and electric toothbrushes without releasing the same kinds of harsh chemicals into the air that burning does. After shredding, the bits of e-waste are sorted, sometimes using optical sensing for increased accuracy, according to the types of materials, which are then sold to other companies that use these reclaimed metals and plastics in other products. Everything from car batteries to furniture. Of course, if you have something that's outdated but still functional, it's usually better to find a way to reuse it rather than recycling it. So you can sell or donate it to an organization, again, like Free Geek here in Vancouver, that specializes in refurbishing old electronics and computer hardware. With that said, sometimes it's just broken, so if you do have to recycle it, make sure you're taking it to a reputable recycler and not a place that'll just ship it offshore. Or you could just sell it to the script kitty down the street in exchange for your very own botnet. Yes. Speaking of selling things, do you have a small business? Are you racing against the clock as a freelancer doing like computer work or like running a dance studio out of your garage or whatever it is that you're doing? It's challenging. But thanks to the power of the internet and FreshBooks, 
you can spend more time doing your work and less time figuring out how complicated accounting software works. FreshBooks has been redesigned for the way you work and it's the simplest and easiest way to be more productive, more organized, and perhaps most importantly, get paid more quickly. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster. And you can even see when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. So FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to our viewers. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash techquickie and enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other channels, leave a comment with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe.